This time, we prepare our hearts and our minds for the Lord's Supper. This is an opportunity we have to support our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We prepare ourselves that we are worthy of this sacrifice. We turn our scripture to the uh, 1 Corinthians, the 23rd chapter. I mean, the 11th chapter started in 23rd verse. That uh, reads as follows, For I have received of the Lord, that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup and when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthy shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. At this time, we'll bless the bread. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son's sacrifice, his obedience to you, his love that he gave his life, his body being broken on that cross for our sins. That everyone that takes of this bread that represents his flesh that was torn, for our sins, they take it with an understanding and a uh, pure hands and pure heart that they might be acceptable in your sight, Lord. We ask this in all things, Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Amen. Shall we bless the fruit of the vine? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for your son's sacrifice. The fruit of God that represents his blood that was pouring out for our salvation that washes away our sins, Lord. We ask that everyone that takes this emblem understands what it is and that they have a clean heart and clean mind when they take of it. We ask this in all things in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. That concludes the Lord's Supper. We have another commandment that we give a portion of that which God has blessed us with. And the scriptures let us know that we not give of uh, the grudgingly or necessity, but of the goodness of our heart. Because God loves a cheerful giver. And it's time we ask that all give cheerfully and from the love in their heart as God has prospered them. Let's go to our Heavenly Father and bless this offering. Your kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for all that you've done for us, your love that you show upon an unworthy world, that you lift us up with your love and your word, that we might be strong and be able to, to uh, uh, avoid the evils of Satan and, and lean upon you, Lord. We ask that you bless each and every one that is here to give, Lord, that their offerings will be multiplied in your kingdom, that every heart and mind be pure and, and righteous in their giving. We ask this in all things in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Let us turn our hymn. Let us turn our hymn to hymn number two. Yeah. Come, we that love the Lord and let our joys be known. Join in the song with sweet accord. Join in the song with sweet accord. And thus surround the throne. And thus surround the throne. We're marching to the Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching to the Zion, a beautiful city of God. Then let our songs abound in every city time. We're marching to the Emmanuel's ground. We're marching to Emmanuel's crown to fair we're worlds on high, to fair we're worlds on high. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. 
Our scripture reading this morning will be from Hebrews, the second chapter, verses two through four. Hebrews, the second chapter, verses two through four. How shall we escape if we ignore such a great salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also testified to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles, and gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. It is not to angels that we, that, that he has subject the world to come, about which we are speaking. But there is a place where someone has testified. What is a man that you are mindful of him? The son of man that you care for him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of his holy word. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we ask that you forgive us for our sins. Father, we ask you to forgive or give us for our thoughts. Father, we ask you to forgive us for our words and our deeds. Father, for there's so much bother in our minds today. Father, there's so much going on in the world that we have no control over. Mm -hmm. But Father God, we know that you control everything. Yes, that all we have to do is ask in prayer through your son, Jesus Christ, and it shall be given. Amen. Father, if we just spend the time that we need to spend with you, I believe everything will be all right. Amen. But so many things keep us from keeping our minds on you, oh Father. Father, we ask that you watch over the children, oh, Father, as they try to learn, as they try to grow up, oh, Father, in this world. Father, be with the parents and be with the teachers and be with the, the authorities, oh, Father, that they may have the children in mind when things happen. Father, we ask that you move in us, oh, Father, to help us be the example that you want us to be. Father, there's so much that, that stands on our minds that sometimes we fall and we fall short. The problem is, is that some of us don't get back up when we fall. And we ask that you have your Holy Spirit move in us to let us get back up and repent and move on and do your will and not our own. Father, there's so much in our hearts and our minds, and it's heavy on our hearts today, oh Father, for what's going on in this world. Father, we ask that you that you heal those that are on our prayer list. Father, be it mind, soul, or body. Father, we ask that you walk and talk with us each and every day. For without you, nothing can happen. But with you, all things can happen. Father, we ask that you just watch over us and keep us. And when, and when those thoughts come in our minds, oh, Father, you help move those away. Yes. Strengthen us, oh, Father, as we try to do your will here, as we try to be examples, as we try to lift up your son, Jesus Christ, in our lives each and every day. Yes. But, Father, let us not sit down 
and not do your will. Let us always be willing to help someone, oh Father, whatever it may be. Strengthen us, oh Father, for we need to be strengthened because of what's going on out here in this world. It so much can take us away from doing your will and being the example you want us to be. Help us, oh Father, and never leave us alone. Move with the messenger today, oh Father. Let him re be reminded of all the things that he studied so that he can give us your word. Then when we think that we've come to the end of our journey and that we can't do no more, give us the strength to move on and go on Amen. and do your will. In all things, we give you the honor and glory and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us turn our hymn books to hymn number 73. 73. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He maketh me down to lie. In pastor's green, he leadeth me. In pastor's green, he Oh, my God. 
that I may see the blessed way. He ate me that I may behold me, thy dancing redemption song someday. Thank you. 
Churches don't have church leaders today because they didn't train my the next generation. Right. We trying to, and we hope and pray that y'all if and just ask the congregation to do the best you can uh, to help us to be able to do so. Amen. Sister Virgie, I came so close yesterday meeting that ambulance you got in uh -huh. Missouri. <laughs> yeah, I did. I tell you, I made a mistake yesterday, but I won't make that mistake again. Right. And uh, so you'll see me with this up here today. It's a necessity. It's a necessity. Right. <laughs> in order for me to be right. able to continue. Right. Um, we start also today. I forgot to let uh, Kevin knew, but I didn't tell him to announce it. We start doing a nursing home again today. Yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, over in Rockford, as uh, I'm not sure the name of it, but it's the one right before River Cross. We used to go to River Cross and they kicked the Lord out of there. So <laughs> we had the one right before, it's still on the same road, just right before River Cross. And so, no, no, I'm the Lord's will, I'll be going by there today to do service for them. Now, the scripture that was read. Uh, actually, that was to be read for, to your hearing was from Hebrews chapter 2, uh, verses 2 through 4. The Bible says, for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. Now for a subject today, I'm using God has spoken. Amen. In contrast to the centuries of religious wars of oppression, tolerance has become a hallmark of our age. What society gained in peace and mutual respect, however, was purchased at the expense of its commitment to truth. Truth is not a high priority 
for people nowadays. Law is not necessarily a high priority of people today, especially when our politicians. And society that we live in does not care anything about truth. And they show up, don't care nothing about the will of God. Attempting to be inoffensive and open-minded, the spirit of our age seeks inclusiveness mm -hmm. at any price. Right. Moses was warned when he was about to build the tabernacle in Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 5, which states, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished or warned of God when he was about to make the tabernacle, he said, For see, said he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. God is very specific about what he wants. And he is determined to have what he wants. Amen. And he's going to get what he wants, whether we like it or not. Amen. Who are we to stand in the way of God? In our society now, those of us that are on the, mouth, the sound of my voice this morning already know that, already respect that. And believe it or not, whether they like it or not, the society we live in is going to come to respect it also one day and ain't going to have no choice. Amen. Whatsoever but to accept it. While the world was deteriorated spiritually, while it's done deteriorated spiritually, with this non-committal approach to God's word, God still calls on us, his people, to be a profound commitment. We are that beacon of light that is to guide people to God. Yes, they are to see Christ Jesus in me yes. in my life yes. and I can't be pretending Amen. I got to be for real right. and so therefore when the world says, because believe it or not contrary to popular belief the average person excuse me in the world is miserable yeah Anybody who does not have God in their life That's right. That's right. is one most miserable individual. That's right. Makes me think about Paul when he said that if Jesus Christ did not resurrect, was not resurrected, are we the most miserable of men? Amen. Amen. So therefore, while the world deteriorated into spiritually, God calls us on us to be committed Obedient, righteous, he calls us to righteousness, faithfulness, and he challenges on us as the Lord's church to rise above the level of mediocrity. He expects us to be productive and not productive in worldly issues or worldly things, but productive in spiritual things. The Lord's church, meaning the church of Christ, has never been allowed by the Lord himself to be just mediocre. Right. Amen. For Jude himself wrote in Jude chapter 1 and verse 3. Notice I'm going slow enough to where you can follow me in your Bible. Yes, sir. In Jude chapter 1 and verse 3, the Bible says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. He said, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort or urge you that ye should earnestly, seriously contend for the faith Amen. which was once delivered unto the saints. Amen. Amen. The world has deteriorated so much spiritually that 
So many people have fallen victim to Satan's tricks. Right. One of the most cleverest tricks of Satan is where religious leaders are telling people to go to the church of their choice. My God. I ask the question, what about God's choice? Amen. God chose only one. one. And any church other than the one that the Lord has chosen is a counterfeit of Satan. Amen. Amen. But people are so naive and spiritually blind to the extent that they don't even know their Bibles well enough to know which church is the one that God chose. Right. They are, they're so unlearned to keep from using that word such, such, such the song so that life. <laughs> they are so unlearned spiritually. Yeah. That they have no idea what the Lord's church is or what she looks like. But the saddest part of the whole situation is that so many members of the Church of Christ are no better off. Right. We are supposed to be the lost ambassadors here on this earth, and sad as it may seem or be, the average member of the Church of Christ is not even faithful enough to where they can pray even for themselves. Let alone trying to pray for the lost soul to this world. Before you can save anybody else, you must first save yourself. And members of the lost church, meaning the Church of Christ, we were saved that we might save somebody. We were taught that we might teach somebody. However, the cycle is broken with so many of the members of the Church of Christ because we have churches full of babies and unlearned members where the Word of God is concerned. And you know, if you don't plan on teaching nobody, then you have no reason to come to Bible school. I don't understand what it is about grown people who don't understand that they need to learn this book. Because number one, you cannot please God without it. And if you don't please God, I hope, I hope you don't think you're going to heaven. Because you can't. It's impossible. And so therefore, before, like I say, before you can save anybody, you got to save yourself first. The Lord demands our obedience. In 1 John 5, 3, the Bible states, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. You know, the only time the Lord's commandments become grievous to us is when they go against our will. As a servant of God, you ain't got no will no more. When Paul says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, he's using the word, the word, the Greek word doulos. And it means a bond servant. And a bond servant has no will of his own, Amen. but rather his will is his master's will. Amen. And I was telling, I was teaching the class yesterday, and I was saying that the church cannot, you can't build a church by baptizing people who are just coming or rather compromising with the world. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't care how many people you baptize, if they ain't coming to submit to Jesus Christ because of their sins and what he did for them, Jesus ain't adding them to the church. Amen. So you didn't build the church. Right. Amen. <laughs> Churches of Christ that are compromising with the world 
They ain't saving nobody. That's right. That's right. You baptize, and that's why so many people, when they come to the knowledge in the church, they get baptized again. Because if you don't come right, Jesus ain't adding you to his church. You ain't going to lose not one sin, and neither are you going to be, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Right. Amen. 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 Which, by the way, is God's seal of approval. Amen. That's right. Second Corinthians one twenty two will tell you that. That's right. So therefore, the Lord demands our obedience, and and and, and like I say, when you put self on the shelf, yeah. God's commandments don't seem so grievous anymore. Amen. In Deuteronomy chapter ten and verse twelve. The Bible states, and now Israel, that's you, Church of Christ. Mm -hmm. Galatians 6 16. Yep. What doth the Lord require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God? Uh, to walk, I'm not sorry, but to walk in all his ways and to love him. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, uh, Moses is saying, which I command thee this day, notice, for thy good. Amen. That tells me to be disobedient to God's commandments is dangerous for you. The Lord demands our obedience. For even Jesus himself asked the question in Luke 6, 46. He said, why? Why call ye me Lord, Lord? And then don't do what I tell you to do. In a nutshell, Jesus is saying, whatever it is, that causes you to disobey or disobedient to my commandments. That's your Lord. Amen. Not me. That's right. That's right. You can pray to the Lord till the cows come home, but if he ain't first in your life, you're wasting your time. Amen. That's right. Amen. You ain't been faithful to the Lord. Guess what else? He don't want to hear nothing from you. He don't want your money. He don't want nothing from you except I have sinned. Amen. Now, y'all might think I'm lying to y'all, but I tell you what, on Judgment Day, you're going to find out that preacher knew what he was talking about. Amen. Amen. The Lord demands for us to be righteous. I cannot be righteous if I'm disobedient to his commands. Amen. He has paid the price for us to have righteousness. Without his death on that cross, and without his blood taking away your sin, there's no way you could ever been righteous. Man. That's right. When I say I'm perfect, I'm perfect because of the self-sacrifice Jesus made out on that cross. Man. And his blood taking away my sin, his father taking his righteousness and giving it to me and taking Thank my you. sin and giving it to him. Disobedience canceled all of that out. Right. Cancels every bit of it. Right. And let me say this here. It seems like I got forever, don't it? I'm going to live there. But here's the sad thing. That old grim reaper will come when you least expect it. For those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about death. None of us know what death is in our life. There's no guarantee any of us going to walk out of here alive today. And that's why I ask the question all the time. If Jesus came back right now, where would you spend the time? And don't base it up on what you think Amen. or what you hope. Where would you spend eternity based upon what this book says? That's how you want to find out where Amen. you go. And I can tell you right now, if you be honest, every last one of us know whether we could go to heaven or not right now. Amen. Because the way you treat God is what's going to determine where you spend eternity. Yes. And I like when I say, 
your attitude is going to determine your altitude when Jesus gets back. Christ paid an awesome price on Calvary's cross in order to make us righteous. Let us not disappoint him by returning to our sinful ways. For in 1 Corinthians 1 30, the Bible states, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us what? Wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. God did that for you. He did that for me. And he did it through Jesus Christ. He sacrificed his only begotten for you and me. And you know as well as I do, you wouldn't sacrifice yourself and your child for nobody. Even if you got ten more, you still ain't sacrificing that. He only had one. And he sacrificed him for us. I think he deserves our obedience. Amen. The Lord demands us to be faithful. We are challenged on a daily basis to, full, to be faithful to the Lord. True. And you know as well as I do, each and every one of us have our own battles that we wrestle Amen. with on a daily basis. Amen. That's right. And most of us depend on God to get us through those battles. Amen. Amen. And on a daily basis, he brings us through those battles. We know that we can count on him because he said he would take care of us. He said he would never forsake us. He would never leave us. And he's always there. But we have a tendency to leave him every time. The Lord can't help us when we leave him. I thought the Lord could do anything he wants. He chooses not to do some things. Amen. That's right. That's right. The truth. He will not help us when we're disobedient. He will not help us when we are unfaithful. Because you know what I like about God. He can do whatever he wants to. Amen. Amen. That's right. Whether I like it or not. Amen. Because he's God. Amen. His son is the same way Amen. and the Holy Spirit is the same way also. Talking about, I was talking yesterday about how people are so afraid of the God of the Old Testament. But they love Jesus. John chapter 14 didn't Jesus say, if you have known me, you should have known my father. Because my father and I are one. Jesus can be just as mean, <laughs> just as harsh as his father can. And check this out. I ain't never seen Jehovah God pull a whip out. No. His son did though. Amen. 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 You better be careful how you treat his sanctuary. Amen. When he said it was meant to be a house of prayer, you done made it a den of thieves. Boy, they tell me he, he can swing a whip too. <laughs> and so the Lord in Hebrews 3, chapter 3, verses 10 from 15, he says, Wherefore I was grieved with that generation. God talked about the generation that was in the wilderness once. And said, They do error in their heart. And they have known, have not known my way. Let me tell you something. If you are just going through the motion, but your heart is not in it, mm. do you think God don't know? Yeah, he, knows. Amen. he said they was, I was, I mean, they, they error in their heart, and they have not known my ways. Mm. So I swear in my wrath, in my anger. They shall not enter into my rest. Let me tell you something. What they got to do with me, brother? Well, for this Old Testament, he's telling us that if we find ourselves in the same state that they was in, our rest is heaven. 
He letting us know we ain't coming into the gates of heaven yeah. if we are in that state. Right. Yeah, man. Amen. Now, I don't know. I go to church to be obedient to God. Amen. I go to church and I attend services because he commanded that I do so. Amen. I come to Bible school because he has commanded that I do so. I want to make heaven my home. I'm not just going through the motion. But he said, you just going through the motion like they were doing, you ain't coming into my rest. And he said, take heed, brother. Brother in the generic means brother and sister. Lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. You know something? Sometimes members of the church depart from God and don't even have sense enough to realize they have. Anytime I'm disobedient, anytime I am not obedient to his command, I separate myself from him. If I separate myself from him, Isaiah 59, 1 and 2, in case you think I'm lying, then I have departed from him. Amen. That's right. That's right. An evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort or urge one another daily while it is called today. Amen. You know why he said while it is called today? I love this. My brother Phil brought this out in our Bible class uh, maybe last year, year before last. He said, have you ever noticed tomorrow never gets here? Never. Amen. Amen. Remember that, Brother Phil? Yes. That's right. He said, tomorrow never gets here. Right. We're always saying tomorrow. But when we get to the day, it's today. He said today. Why? Because tomorrow is not promised to you. Amen. You may never see tomorrow. Yes. You may not even see the rest of today. Amen. Yeah. And so therefore, that's why it's important. He said, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. While it is said today, if you hear his voice, pardon not your hearts as they did in the day of provocation. That means during the time of the wilderness one. And if you know anything about biblical history, God didn't play one. Amen. They messed up, they died right there and there. The only thing you got on them that they didn't have back then, you're covered by the grace of God that came by Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. But that does not mean you won't receive the same punishment they received eventually if you don't get it right. Amen. Amen. And I'll be honest with you. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be punished by God. They tell me his punishment is rough. The Lord demands our faithfulness, and he has every right to demand anything from us that he wants to. The Lord's church, meaning the church of Christ, has to rise above the level of mediocrity. Otherwise, we fail yeah. to be his church. Amen. That goes for us as members of the church of Christ individually as well as a unified congregation. Amen. Makes me think about the churches in uh, the seven churches of age. Yeah. Lord told one congregation, they did all kinds of work. They looked good to themselves. They looked good to the world. Jesus said, you tore up from the floor. Mm. <laughs> I'm ashamed of you. Wow. Whether congregation is pleasing to God or not is determined by the word of God. And believe me and you, if a congregation gets to the point to where all she's doing is just good works, reaching out and not paying people bills, feeding people and so forth, but she don't forgot the spiritual aspect of the church, guess what? Amen. She ceases to be the Lord's church because she will have she will have turned her back on the mission the Lord left to hear from. Mm -hmm. right. 
That's right. Amen. Now, some of y'all looking at me cross eyed. Yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> All right. I am not saying that about my congregation. Our congregation, if, in other words, let me put it to you like this here. Doing those works are good. Yeah. But you have to keep a balance Amen. with spiritual yes. and physical yes. things the church does. Amen. Our congregation does a good job in that. Amen. And you should say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, you should say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> For blessing us with the wisdom to be able to do yeah. so. Because a lot of congregations of the Lord's church, they fail in that aspect. Amen. They either do they go too much on one side and not on the other. We have a responsibility for benevolent work. Yes. But we also have a responsibility of spiritual work as well. Amen. And so you have to keep a balance. And I think we do a real good job here at doing that. Amen. But if you've been some of the places I've been, yeah. you know what I'm talking about. Amen. And so the Lord, you see, that goes on. Uh, and so a desire to follow human nature, rooted in pride, mm. encourages individuality and division. Yeah. Church, when we see that rearing its ugly head, for instance, like the men against the women or the women against the men, shut it down. Amen. Amen. I thank God we don't have that here, and I'm hoping and praying that all of us are wise enough to realize that if that does occur, shut it down. Amen. And you have my permission if you want to to slap somebody. <laughs> I'm better say, no, nah, don't do that because some of us would. <laughs> I love my congregation. I love you. And I know, but I, I'm not going to the Lord blame me for that word. <laughs> so don't slap nobody. Just give them a good talking to. <laughs> I'm not that preacher told, preacher told, and remember the slap. So y'all remember now, boy, whoop took that back. Yeah. In Matthew chapter 17, verses 4 and 5, the Bible states, Then, well, we're going to say that man has always thought that he could figure out how to save himself. Mm -hmm. Always. However, man has always been wrong. I want to point this out too. It's easy to go along with the crowd. It's so easy. Because you ain't going to get no pushback. Mm -hmm. right. Right. But let me tell you something. The child of God can't be no cow. Right. Right. And what I'm saying with this is. The crowd is always wrong. Mm. Amen. Jesus said, yeah, the way that leads to destruction in Matthew chapter 7 is broad. Oh, right. There will be many who find their way in, but he said the way that leads to life is narrow. Right. There will be few who find their way into it. And so therefore, don't you ever be ashamed to tell somebody that the church of Christ is on the church thing that our salvation is. That's right. Amen. If they are seriously looking for salvation for their soul, they will at least investigate. Amen. Amen. Otherwise, they ain't serious. Amen. That's right. Amen. So therefore, in Matthew chapter 17, verses 4 through 5, the Bible states, then Peter. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. He said, if thou wilt, let us make thy three tabernacles, our churches, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of heaven. Or rather out of the clouds, which said, This is my beloved son, 
in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. Hear ye him means listen to what he's saying. Listen to it. Just do what Jesus tells you to do. He knows exactly what he's doing. Why? Because he's following his father's guidance and direction. How many times do he say, I must be about my father's business? I can only do that of the will of him who sent me. He was a, he showing us what we need to do ourselves. Amen. Amen. That's right. Is to do the will of his father. Man. Man today is no different from the way Peter was on that day on the Mount of Transfiguration. Man is still hard headed, stubborn, strong will. In Matthew 16, 18, and 19, Jesus himself said, and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And he said that the gates of hell, some Bible say Hades, is really Hades, yeah. shall not prevail against thee. He said, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now Jesus said he was going to build his church. One church. If this is what the Son of God said, then why do we get the idea that you can attend the church of your choice? Amen. Peter brought up the idea of building more than one church. And Jehovah God, you notice Jesus didn't even get a chance to answer before Jesus had a chance to say, among the word, Jehovah God the Father spoke up and said to himself, he said, this is my and love. Could you imagine how powerful his voice must have been? This is my beloved son in whom I am well. Me telling me, I ain't very pleased with you right now, baby. <laughs> And then he there, and, you know, and he spoke up from him and, and basically told Peter to sit down and shut up. See, Peter had to have a talk when he should have been. Yeah, yeah. yeah he <laughs> And you'll know God never had to tell him to sit down and shut up again. That's right. <laughs> God telling him just follow Jesus. Let me tell you something, church. He's telling us the same thing today. Amen. Just hear ye him. him. Amen. Follow my son. Yes. Amen. Do what my son instructed you. Amen. Paul tells you not to quench the spirit. Let the spirit help you yes. to do what the what the father has instructed the son to instruct us to do. Amen. Because Amen. the thing about that is. is Jehovah God the Father wants everybody saved. Amen. But he is not going to save anybody on their own terms. Right. Now if you cannot bring yourself to submit to God, to the righteousness of God, don't be blaming nobody but yourself when you get the punishment you headed for. Amen. You brought it on yourself. Amen. Right. You ain't nobody gonna receive nobody else's punishment on judgment day. Right. And ain't nobody gonna receive anybody else's reward on judgment day. Right. You're only gonna get what you got coming to you. Amen. 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 That's right. And what you got coming to you is gonna be determined how you treated God in this life. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and 10 and 10. Jesus said he was going to build one church. Ephesians 1, 22 through 23. The Bible station had put all things under his feet, meaning Jesus, and gave him to be the head of all things in the church. One church, which is his body. Yeah. The fullness of him that filled all and in all. 
Jesus said he was going to build one church. Paul said that the one church is also the Lord's body. In Ephesians 2, 16, the Bible states, and that he, meaning Jesus, might reconcile both, meaning Jew and Gentile, unto God in one body or one church. Amen. By the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. Mm. Colossians 1.18, the Bible states, and he, meaning Jesus, is the head of the body, which is the church, right. who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, yeah. then in all things he might have preeminence. Yeah. That's why you put self on the shelf, so right. Jesus can have preeminence in your life. Right. Right. <clears throat> Once again, in Colossians 1.18, the Apostle Paul tells us that the body and the church are one and the same. Now, in numerous places, we are told that there is only one body and one church. Amen. And that's why I've never understood why a member of the Church of Christ be afraid or ashamed to tell a person that. Amen. That the Lord only got one church. Amen. That the one church is called the Church of Christ. Amen. People who don't want to accept that are not ready to obey the gospel anyway. That's just kind of like uh, keeps you from wasting your time and spinning your wheels. Amen. They can't accept that. Sometimes they can't accept it right away, but those who are sincere a lot of times will go and investigate and they'll realize you know what you're talking about. Amen. That's the way I was. Amen. I've been in the church now for, I think it's 37 years. Mm. But when I first heard it, it's like, it made me mad and angered me. Yeah. You know, and brother being false to preach, and I'm, who in the world that little fellow think he is? <laughs> Talking about it ain't but one church. Yeah. Now what about the church I'm in up here? Okay, I was in the new, um, uh, Mount Zion Baptist Church. Amen. Yeah. Cornerstone with some man's name on it. Uh, uh, <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah. But when we learn better, we do better. That's right. You see, because the Lord said, if I seek, I'll find. Amen. If I knock, it will be over. Yeah. If I ask, I shall receive. Amen. So people who have not come to the knowledge of the truth then they obviously not seeking. Yeah. They obviously not knocking. Mm. And they obviously are not asking. Yes. Because I ain't found from Genesis or Revelation anywhere where the Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit ever lied. Amen. That tells me you ain't seeking. You don't want salvation. Because he ain't going to give it to you on your terms. Right. You're going to submit. You see, we got a problem with submitting. I'm telling you now, if you ain't submitted, Philippians chapter 2 tells me you're going to. Amen. Every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess Jesus to be the Lord. Let me tell you something. He's saying, I'm going to force you to do it. But if you do it now, it'll benefit you. Amen. But on, on judgment day, if he has to force you to do so, after you do, then he's going to condemn you to hell. Amen. Do it now while it can benefit you Amen. and open the doors to heaven for you. Because yes. everybody who thinks they go going to hell, and my, 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 my grandmother used to say, now my mother used to say, ain't got a snowball's chance. In L L E H of God. Amen. 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 I say 98% of church folks are not going to heaven. Wow. I feel comfortable in saying that. Mm -hmm. no. That's talking about Church of Christ and all other religious uh, organizations. No. So I'm saying in Romans 12, 4 through 5, Paul lets us know that although we're men and members, only one, one body. And that's the reason why I am so adamant. I want us to understand that the body of Christ is not just right here. Yeah. 
Amen. Amen. North Park is a part of our family. Amen. Harlem Road, whether they're racist or not, is a part of our family. Amen. State Street is a part of our family. All the convocations that are trying to do right by the word of God is a part of the body of Christ. The Lord's body is worldwide. Amen. That's why he didn't need but one church. She's big enough to hold everybody. everybody. Amen. Although Peter says it's going to be scarcely a few of us Amen. that's going to make it. Because judgment is going to start with us. Mm -hmm. Church, don't ever be afraid to tell somebody the gospel truth. Amen. I don't know who I was talking with. I think it was Brother Jim Corr. And we was and he was saying, when he obeyed the gospel, he lost so many friends. Amen. He lost so many family members. Yeah. And I was telling him, it was the same, the same was true with me. But when I started going to be a working, uh, studying to be a preacher. Lord have mercy, I think the whole world turned on me then. <laughs> Family members, I mean, everybody ain't have a friend left in the world. Yeah. Look, even some of the church folks turned on me. But I said to myself, back then, nobody was concerned about my soul until I obeyed the gospel. Amen. That's right. Up until then, I was just in the same melting pot with everybody else. Right. But when I was taught the gospel truth, yes. and I obeyed the gospel truth, and believe me and you, I obeyed from the form, from the heart. Yeah. That form of doctrine that was delivered unto me. My family, my after I got baptized, and every time I thought about it, I couldn't hold the tears back. Mm. Because I realized for certain I was saved and I was uh, I was serving God and he accepted my service not because I thought so but because the Bible said Amen. so. Amen. That is so important. I had that assurance. That song we sang, Blessed Assurance. I had that blessed assurance. Yes, Amen. yes Lord have mercy. I still remember that night. Two o'clock in the morning, one April night. I remember it like it just happened yesterday because that's the most important day in my life. Amen. When I got baptized into the Lord's church. Amen. My second most important day in my life. My, my wife waiting on this. <laughs> and when I got married. Amen. I dare not see him again. <laughs> but church, do y'all understand what I'm saying here? Amen. The Hebrew writer says, how shall we escape if we neglect Ugh. so great a salvation? Mm. And then I stole for a topic God has spoken. You don't have to wonder where God is concerned. Yes. He tells you everything. Yes. Right. 2 Peter 1 3, he tells us all we need to know that right. pertains to life and God. Right. And so when I decide to put self on the shelf and start obeying God, I'm gonna, I'll tell anybody this watch how your life changes. Amen. Amen. That's right. Because then the Holy Spirit is actively involved in your life. Amen. But if you disobedient, living in sin or what have you, the Holy Spirit can't help you. But when you get it right, watch how the Holy Spirit. Man, you're going to be amazed at how good your life is going to be. Amen. Amen. Because I'm obedient to God. Amen. And I encourage each one of us to do just that. Obey God. Amen. Like I said, the only time his commandments are grievous is when they go against my own will. When if I'm a member of the Lord, I ain't supposed to be having anyway. Huh? Amen. 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 
But I will say this. If you are not a member of the church of Christ, you don't even have any hope. You have no hope whatsoever of making heaven your home. That's how sad it is. Now, you don't have to believe me. You can wait till Jesus comes back. And like the song says, he don't straighten you out. Straighten you out. But if he has to straighten you out, it ain't going to benefit you none whatsoever. That's right. He's just going to straighten you out for the benefit of you knowing what's correct. And then he's going to condemn you. But if you want to make heaven your home, then you better become a member of the church of Christ. And I'm going to tell you this. You got to hear the word of the gospel. That's 15 and 7. I'm talking to y'all more. Man. About that sacrifice Jesus made on Calvary's cross in order to pay for my sin. Pay for your sin. But yet, and then after that, you have to believe that he died, was buried, and rose again on the third day. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, and I like Paul add to it, according to the scriptures. Yeah. And then after that, I heard and believed, I have to repent. See, a lot of us don't want to repent. Mm, right. I, I'll use my mother as an example. My mother heard the gospel truth time and time again. When me being her son, how could she not? <laughs> exactly. Right. You know what she told me? She said, Larry, she said, I know what you're telling me is true. Mm -hmm. She said, but I just love the music. Mm -hmm. So many folks are going to go to hell because they love instrumental music. Mm -hmm. God never authorized it, and he will not accept it. Mm -hmm. He does this, and he said, that's why we don't have all these different instrumental or musical instruments up here. That's right. God then operates it, well, we can't afford it. No, we can afford anything we want to. Right. We serve a God who can make it happen. That's right. That's right. But he did not authorize no. that. And I dare any of us, and I'll be honest with you, churches are beginning to uh, compromise with the world. Right. I'm tell you now, you got a church leadership that's allowing you to compromise with the world. I'll tell you what, you need to lead and talk to them first. Right. See if they're willing to come. Uh, see if they're willing to get back within the means and bounds of scripture. And if not, hey, I'm out there like I'm, I'm gonna run like I'm on fire. Right. That's right. After I have heard and believed and repented, Luke 13, 3, repenting of my sin. That means to turn from sin. If you in a church other than the denomination, other than the church of Christ. Then you're living in sin and don't even know it. Turn from that mess and turn to God. Uh, that's what repentance is all about. To change your heart. Luke 13, 3, once you do that, you confess Jesus Christ to be the Son of the living God. Let me tell you this. You don't just confess him that one time. Amen. You confess Jesus for the rest of your life by the way you live your life. Amen. Matthew 10, 32, and once you've done that, then you have to be baptized. I don't care if you were baptized in a denominational church or some other church. And any preacher that tells you that you don't have to be baptized to be a member of the church of Christ, they lie to you. Boy, they never told nobody in the world to baptize somebody in his church. They don't have the authority. I don't care if they're a preacher, bishop, or whatever they might be. Only a member of the church of Christ can baptize you into the church of Christ. Right. And you can't accept that, then you're not ready to go to heaven anyway. Amen. Your baptism has to be a burial, not a sprinkling or pouring. Romans 6, 4 through 6, Colossians 2 and 11 through 14. And after that, the Lord will add you to the church. Acts 2, 47, he said, uh, praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church, one church, daily, such as should be saved. But let me tell you this here. If he don't add you to the church, you will not be saved. You will lose no sin. And you will not receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
A lot of people got baptized in church Christ and later on in the years when they understood the Bible, they realized they didn't receive, they were never had. Yeah. They never received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And they didn't lose not one sin. Mm. Because they got baptized because of their friends and they got baptized for some reason other than what the Bible gives. Right. That's why I always ask somebody before they get baptized, well, I baptize them. Why do you want to get baptized? Amen. You don't tell me the right answer. You ain't going in the hour water. If you do it, you're going to do it on your own. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> and after that, you have to send articles of grace to your face, 2 Peter 1, 5 through 10. If you're subject to the Lord's invitation, let me tell you something. The Lord is always ready. Amen. The church is always ready. Even the water, not like the Robert always had in the water ready. <laughs> Even the wine ain't red. Amen. It ain't cold either. Amen. Like Amen. James, James, the water was cold. Yeah. cold no, we might want well to stay down there and do the baptism. But I'm serious about that. If you're serious about making heaven your home, you can't afford to pass this out, this invitation up yes. too many times. Amen. I'm serious about that because the Lord wants everybody saved. But he ain't going to force you. And he showing up ain't going to save you in something that he didn't have his son to offer. Right. Our status. You're subject to the Lord's invitation. We invite you to come as we together stand and sing the song of invitation. Give not a temptation for yielding his sin. business of lying to people uh, but I'm in the business of telling people what God has said uh, and so therefore if you have any questions you feel free to come to me same thing to those of you that are watching over the air my phone number is 608 302 2902 time is winding up and if you're not searching the scriptures to find out what God wants from you, I suggest you start doing so. Yeah. Thank you. Let us stand. We thank the Lord for that word that we just received. Yes. Thank God for his wonderful word. Amen. Praise God. So grateful for that. Let us all pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, we thank you so much, our dear Heavenly Father, for your word that we received this, this morning. We thank you for everything that was said. We thank you for the explanation of the scriptures. We thank you for the way that our minister broke it down, Lord. We thank you for your Holy Spirit in him that brought that word, Lord. 
We ask, Lord, that you would uh, help us to, to, to keep that word, Lord. We ask that you would pay close attention to the particular things that he said about reaching out to others and telling somebody that the Church of Christ is the only church, that you only have one of these things that really that we need to put in our mouths and give to other people, Lord, that we don't be afraid. And why wouldn't we be afraid, Lord, if there is really just one, Lord? And, and thank you so much for for what we receive. Lord, we also ask that you would be with all those concerning the prayer requests and the petitions that were mentioned in our service today. And we ask Lord, that you would help bring us back here, that we may be able to complete our day of worship, Lord, that we may be faithful to you and faithful to the promise and faithful to our the commandments that you've given us. Lord, we ask these things, your darling son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Uh, sisters, don't forget up front for a couple minutes. 4.30. Uh, men, 4.30. Uh, I believe uh, the last uh, 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 uh,